Let's talk about GART model in this video. The full name of GART is Generalized Autoregressive Conditional Heteroskedasticity Model. Yeah, I know, it's a very complex term. I wish this video can help you to understand the purpose of the GART model, so let's talk about it. In the previous lectures, I showed everyone how to use ACF and PACF plots to identify a time series analysis model. I listed the lecture video down below. If you haven't studied that course, please take a look at it. But sometimes you will see an ACF chart like the one on this slide. Some classmates may say, this is different from what we have learned. Because none of the spikes is significant. You are right. We have to use a new model to process a time series like this. When you see an ACF chart with non-significant spikes, the first thing you want to think about is this time series is not significantly correlated, but the data values are still dependent on each other. Some classmates say, wait, professor, you just give me an alien term. Now you give me a very challenging statement. What does this even mean? Let me use an example to explain this statement to you. Yesterday, it was reported that Apple plan to manufacture a self-driving car from 2024. This news is big, right? This is a huge event. So the impact of this news on today's stock price will be very strong, no doubt. But think about uh, from a long term. Half year later or one year later, when investors began to digest this news, they will get used to this big news. So the impact of this news will not be as strong as today, half year later or one year later. Does the news influence this time series? Yes. But does it last throughout the entire time series? No. From a long term, no. Where did we meet the term significance? When we studied linear regression, right? We build a model from a sample, and then we want to infer the relationship from the sample to the population. Here, we use the same idea. The event will influence the time series, but the impact will not influence the entire time series. In time series analysis, the entire time series is the population. In other words, some short-term future stock prices are indeed dependent on certain news, but the impact of the news will not last throughout the entire time series from a long term. This is what this statement means. Complex enough? How about we use a simpler term to describe the entire statement? I think volatile is a very good option. Volatile means that the stock prices are indeed being influenced by certain events, but the impacts of the events will quickly disappear in the time series. Volatile also explains what the word heteroskedasticity means. It means a data set with different variances. We use variances to measure the volatility of a data set. If you have a, a volatile data, that means the variances of the data set are changing frequently. This is what the word heteroskedasticity means. Different variances, volatile data set. When you see an ACF chart like this, none of the spikes is significant. You should immediately think about this time series is volatile. For volatile data sets, we use GART model to process volatile data. Can you tell me what types of data are volatile? Stock prices are volatile, right? Because each company's stock price is being influenced by so many unexpected events very frequently. So they will change very frequently. Therefore, GART is a very good model for analyzing stock prices. 
this is a complex model, right? It's supposed to be because this is a Nobel Prize award-winning model. So it should be complex. This model was developed by Dr. Robert Ingo from uh, New York University in 1982. Before that, we didn't have a model, a very good model to quantify volatility. We know volatility is important in stock analysis and forecast, but we don't have a model, a good model to quantify that. Dr. Ingo developed the, the Garch model so that we can quantify volatility of a stock price data set. This is a, a breakthrough development. Therefore, he was awarded the Nobel Prize in 1990s. You see, the Nobel Prize award-winning research is not only existing in ivory towers. We are actually using the findings from uh, the research on a daily basis. This is a brief introduction of a Gartz model. I created a Gartz analysis example in the R software. In this example, I used the, a data set of Dow Jones Industrial Average Index daily log return from November 2007 to November 2009. Everybody knows the market was volatile during the financial crisis. So I want to use GART model to quantify the volatility. If log return is new to you, I list the lecture video down below. You can study it. I will list the R script down below as well. You can download it onto your computer and use it as a template for GART analysis. I made some notations before each line of codes. They can explain the purpose of the codes, so I will not repeat the programming codes in this video. But I want to remind everyone about two points. The first one is, when you get the original data set, you still want to check the ACF and the PACF charts of the original data set. You want to see if there is a REMA pattern for the original data set. If you can apply a REMA model to the original data set, you still apply a REMA to the original data set. And then you want to go to the GART analysis. But uh, if in the ACF and PACF charts of the original data set, you cannot find any significant spikes, then you can go directly to the GART analysis. This is the first point I want to remind everyone. The second point is, as you can see in the script, the software can give us some forecasted value according to the GARTS model. What is the return, the log return could be tomorrow? But in practice, these forecasted value are only used by an investor as one source of decision support information. They do not completely determine an investor's final decision. The GARCH model can only give an investor an overview of the stock price volatility history. They do not predict the future impactful events. To make a good future investment, an investor should still closely follow the business news, economic news, and the political news, because this news will create future volatility. One final thing. I try to find the Python code for performing GARCH model. I look it up in the stats model package for Python software. But according to the online documentation, the author said due to low usage, they have removed GARCH model from stats models package. I guess engineers are not using GARCH model as much, but uh, GARCH is a very important financial analytics model. So the R software provides several GART options. That's why I choose the R software for the GART analysis. This leads to an off-topic discussion. Some classmates frequently ask me a question. Should I study Python or R? My recommendation is study both. As you can see, both software have advantages and disadvantages. If you cannot find a package in one software, 
you use another to perform the analysis.